Hi, I'm Linda Romanello with Post Magazine. Welcome to Post TV. We're at NAB 2014. We have Chuck Westfall from Canon with us here today, and he's going to talk to us about some of the company's big announcements at this year's show. Hi, Chuck. How are you? Very good, Linda. Thanks very much for inviting us. Yeah, we appreciate um, you joining us. And well, we're happy to be here. Uh, and uh, this is a very, very busy show for us because we've got four new products that yeah. are uh, really very popular with our customers. So you, um, you certainly have some stuff going on with 4K? Sure. <laughs> Uh, the most popular new introduction on our side is the new Cine Servo Zoom lens. Right. And uh, this is a lens designed to cover the Super 35 format. Mm -hmm. It's available in both the EF mount as well as the PL mount, which is the standard uh, industry standard mount. Um, this is a lens that has a focal length range of 17 to 120 millimeter, which is a very good seven times optical zoom ratio. And it has a very good uh, aperture of T2.95. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a lens that uh, really addresses uh, two major needs in our market. First of, of those is basically over the shoulder type, uh, either documentary filmmaking or electronic news gathering. Okay. Uh, because it does have a detachable drive unit that allows the operator to power the zoom. Um, and it also has manual focus and iris control, of course. Uh, so. That's the kind of uh, application that we see most popular for this type of lens that was not being addressed by either our cinema lenses or our SLR lenses before. Now that we have a uh, powered zoom like this, it's really going to open it up for us. Mm -hmm, sure. But uh, I think that the other uh, maybe uh, unknown factor for some people is the fact that this lens is also very much at home in a television studio. And that's because the drive unit uh, has got three different ports on it. Uh, that can be used with studio controls. Two of them are for your zoom and focus demand units that you normally will put on a pedestal. And the third one is the rotary encoder that goes into the virtual studio. Okay. So uh, if you're doing virtual set, uh, you have the, uh, the talent in front of the camera, but you're dropping in a computerized background. Uh, it's a very, very high precision system to match up the focal length and the distance setting on the lens so that you get a very clean separation between the, uh, the subject and the background. What kind of reception is this getting on the show floor from the attendees? It's tough to get close to the lens. I mean, right. Everybody <laughs> wants to, to get their hands on it. Everybody wants to try it out. Um, and uh, so, you know, very clearly, it's uh, it's the right uh, product to bring in at this particular time. Mm -hmm. And while we're on the subject of 4K, you also have a 4K display. Yeah, actually, you know, before we get into the 4K display, just mm -hmm. the last bit on the lens is the fact that optically it is designed to handle the needs of a 4K capture. Right. So uh, that's very important. You need to have a lens that is going to service you not only for your HD uh, production, but as your, your 4K as well in terms of sharpness, resolution, contrast, and so forth. So um, then, it, once you're at the point of actually uh, having images to work with, right. <laughs> it's, it's nice to be able to, uh, to view them at their full resolution. And that's where our new DP V3010, mm -hmm. which is our new 4K reference display, comes in. Okay. So the numbers on that are actually fairly easy to understand. The 30 is the 30 inch, that's the size of the screen. And the 10 is the fact that it's a 10 bit display, which gives us a very, very high quality tonal gradation. Okay. Uh, now, this is the type of thing that is primarily aimed for digital editing uh, at a very, very high level. It's extremely precise, not only for resolution, but also for color space. So it has full support for the DCI P3 Plus color space, which is the largest color space in use today for grading. Mm -hmm. And we are working directly right now with the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences to provide a 3D lookup table for their ACES color space, which is going to become the industry standard for 4K content creation and also for dig digitization of the existing films. Okay. So the other thing that's nice about this 4K display is the fact that um, it is small enough and light enough that it can be taken on set. Oh, okay. um, and that means that uh, the DIT can use it to be able to check the shots and make sure everything's the way it needs to be. 
um, and at the same time, uh, it can be brought into a, a conventional editing suite and uh, very easily mounted on the wall with uh, standard mounting hardware, um, basically ready to go. Okay. All right. Now, and you also have a couple of other announcements that you... Sure. Yeah. Um, so um, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, our new small chip camcorder, which right. is the XF205 and its partner model, the XF200. Now these are addressing the need in the market for a very uh, compact but high quality uh, camcorder that will be able to handle most of the assignments that are uh, out there for ENG, as well as, uh, again, documentary type work. So what's really cool about this is that in a, a product that weighs less than four pounds, you've got a 20x optical zoom lens with autofocus and image stabilization. And from a, a production standpoint, it's very, very flexible because it uh, has simultaneous recording of the MXF, which is the broadcast ready codec, right. 50 megabits per second, 422, sure. as well as the MP4. Uh, and that is perfect for when you need to go straight to the computer and have a, a deliverable uh, before you go into all the whole regular processing. Right. And of course, on the 205 model, uh, what we're adding in over the 200 uh, is the, uh, the extra jacks that will go into a multi-camera configuration. So you have 3G SDI, HD SDI, time code and Genlock. And so that's perfect for the studio operation. The XF200 is exactly the same camera without those jacks, so it's best for a single operator. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're looking at August delivery on all three of these products that we've talked about so far. Okay. Um, is there any pricing revealed yet on any of this, or yes. is that to come? Yes, so let's let's uh, talk right now about the XF205, that uh, the estimated selling price is about $39.99. Okay. Um, the 200 model is about $34.99. Uh, we talked before about the Cine Servo and the 4K reference display. They are both at about $33,000. Okay. The uh, reference display is already shipping. The uh, uh, Cine Servo lens is due out in August as well. Okay. And we have one last piece. I know. <laughs> Uh, which is our uh, new broadcast zoom lens. And again, this is for the over-the-shoulder ENG conventional two-thirds inch format. Um, it, we're calling it the HJ18EX7.6B. Okay. And so all that alphabet soup is basically <laughs> high definition, two-thirds inch format, 18 pound time zoom ratio with a built-in extender. Okay. <laughs> now all this stuff, uh, when you're coming out with these new products and uh, you, know, you have these announcements at you know, an NAB, um, how much of, of customer feedback is taken into account? And uh, actually, that's probably the most important uh, part of our whole mission here with uh, the NAB show is getting the feedback from our customers to be able to develop our future product. Right. And uh, we're really uh, doing that, I think, to a pretty good degree with all these new products that we're bringing out. Great. Uh, Chuck, just before I let you go, uh, any anything in particular, uh, you know, that you're hearing really big buzz about at the show this year, or any particular trend that you're seeing? Um, I think that this year is the year of 4K. Yeah. Uh, there's no question about it. People are are very much aware of the fact that uh, the 4K is the direction of the industry. Um, and uh, the interesting part about it this year is that uh, besides the capture, which is already under control, now the delivery of the 4K is becoming much more technically possible. So uh, once that part of the puzzle is in place, then it, that just opens the door to, towards all sorts of uh, industry development. Great. Well, thank you. We really appreciate you uh, taking the time to come and talk to us today. If uh, anybody at the show interested in learning more about your products, everything's on display at your booth. And if anybody at home is not here at the show and interested in learning more, do you want to share the company website? Absolutely. Our standard website is usa.canon.com, and right. we're also going to encourage people to come to our microsite, which is cinemaeos.usa.canon.com. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you again, Chuck. We appreciate it. Thank My you. My pleasure. Thank you.